Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at effect of source inductance on single phase full converter. We are going to divide this into two videos. The first video, that is this one, we'll be looking at the operation of the circuit and analyze the waveforms. In the next video, we will be deriving the expression for this particular circuit, just like the way we do the analysis for all the other cases. So let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a single phase full converter circuit, isn't it? We had seen this previously with an RL load and we had also analyzed how the output waveforms are. Now in certain cases, the source itself might have some amount of inductance. So the representation of inductance will be in this form, whereas the inductor is connected in series with the source because the source sometimes might have inductance in certain operation of circuits. So in that cases, there will be some amount of impact at the output voltage that we will get. And that is what we are going to study in this particular operation. Now let's consider the waveforms just like the way we did it for single phase full converter. We'll be considering a sinusoidal voltage source Vs and we'll be applying gate pulses at suitable intervals and we'll be analyzing the output voltage waveform and we'll also be analyzing the current waveform across the thyristors. Now, during positive half cycle, what happens? We'll be supplying gate pulse at this point. Let us say we are supplying a gate pulse at this point. And what happens to the operation of the circuit? So let's consider the circuit diagram. The source voltage, that is supply voltage is going in the positive direction. The supply voltage is plus and minus, isn't it? So T1 is forward biased because plus is connected to anode of T1 and minus is connected to cathode of T2 and T2 is also forward biased and we are also applying a gate pulse. So ideally we expect the thyristor T1 and T2 to start conducting, isn't it? At this point, that is what is V out when T1 and T2 is conducting, whatever we are applying will be appearing at the low terminals. Basically over here, whatever is supplied, the current will be flowing through this path and we'll be getting an output voltage over here, isn't it? So during this cycle, what happens? The inductor starts charging with a polarity that is load inductor with a polarity plus and minus and the source inductor is also going to charge with a polarity plus and minus. So ideally, if we see, considering the effect of the circuit or considering the nature of the circuit over here, whatever we are supplying will be appearing across the load. Considering some amount of voltage that is available at the load inductance and the source inductances. So the overall output voltage will be equal to Vs. So in that case, we expect V out to follow Vs from this point, but that does not happen. What happens is from this point is where V out will be equal to Vs. Why is it starting at this point and not at exactly when we are supplying gate pulse is something we will understand as we go further during this explanation. So at this point, we will exactly get the nature of Vs, it starts continuing to follow the or source voltage waveform in this particular fashion. And during this point, what happens? The supply voltage is going in the negative direction. Since the supply is going negative and positive, we expect T1 and T2 will be reversed biased, but that is not happening. The reason is we had seen in the operation of an RL load that the inductor will reverse its polarity and ensure that T1 and T2 is still forward biased and consequently the current still flows in the same direction. As a result, V out will still be equal to Vs till this point. Isn't it? So this is something that we had seen previously. So the conduction of the output voltage that we are getting is because of T1 and T2 over here. Now at this point, what exactly happens is we are going to supply say gate pulse for the next interval. So during next interval, when we are supplying gate pulse, we'll be considering circuit number two over here that is indicated in red. So the supply voltage waveform is going in the negative direction and we are supplying a gate pulse at this point. So when we are doing that over here, the supply voltage is going negative and positive. Consequently, what is happening? Plus is connected to anode of T3 and minus is connected to the cathode of T4. As a result, T1, T3 and T4 will be forward biased and T1 and T2 will be reversed biased. And consequently, we expect V out to still follow Vs in the opposite direction, isn't it? So V out in this case, so the current flows through this path, 
isn't it? So V out is equal to plus V s. So the output voltage should still continue to follow the source voltage waveform in the positive direction. So that is our expectation. But what happens is because of the presence of source inductance, considering this particular circuit, what happens is the source inductance will not allow sudden change in current, isn't it? It does not allow sudden change in current and it will reverse its polarity that is minus and plus and ensure that T1 and T2 is still conducting for some duration. And in the next cycle, we saw that T3 and T4 was conducting. That is T3 and T4 is conducting because the supply itself is going negative and we are also applying a gate pulse. So in this case, if you carefully observe, T1, T2, T3, T4, all the four thyristors are conducting, isn't it? Just like the way we analyze the load current waveform, that is just like the way we analyze the, the inductance across the load, that it does not allow sudden change in current. Similarly, the same thing happens for the source inductance as well. It will reverse its polarity and ensures that the current still flows through the load in this particular case. So that will ensure that T1 is T2 is still forward biased. So that goes against our assumption that T1 and T2 is reverse biased in this particular circuit that is indicated in red. So basically after this operation, it will come to this circuit and this operation takes place. T1 and T2 will continue to conduct and when till when it will continue to conduct, it will continue to conduct till the energy that is available to T1 and T2 is discharged through the resistor R. So till then this operation takes place. So what is the output voltage in that case? Output voltage is basically a short circuit, isn't it? We are seeing a short at this point. So output voltage will be equal to zero. So V out is equal to zero at this point. And why is that? Because of T1, T2, T3 and T4. Isn't it? This concept is called as overlapping. Meaning to say that all the four thyristors are conducting and overlapping with respect to each other. And this is called as overlapping. And this angle associated with it is called as overlap angle denoted by mu. So consequently, once the energy is completely discharged, say T1 and T2 is reverse biased, it will come to this particular circuit. So we'll start with this circuit and then it goes to this circuit and then it will come back to this circuit. So T1 and T2 will be reverse biased because the energy in the inductance source inductor is discharged through the resistor R. Consequently, it will ensure that T1 and T2 is reverse biased and T3 and T4 will be conducting to the load and we'll be getting the load voltage and V out will be equal to plus V s. As a result, you will be expecting the same voltage that we were getting previously as T1 and T2. And this cycle repeats. So as a result, we started the waveform from this point and not at this point as we can extrapolate and understand what will be the waveform at the beginning stages. So if you try to remember from this point, it will be very confusing. As a result, always try to start from this point. And then once you understand the nature of the waveform, you can just extrapolate what happens before T1 and T2 over here. So same waveform you can replicate and draw over here. So this is nothing but alpha plus mu. So because of T1, T2, T3, T4 conducting together, there is a delay in which it's associated. So the alpha is associated with an additional angle that is alpha plus mu. Now what happens to the thyristor current IT? So thyristor current IT can be analyzed starting at this point again. So the current due to T1 and T2 is flowing, isn't it? When thyristor T1 and T2 is conducting from this point till this point, the current is flowing. Now at this point, what is happening? Current at T1 and T2 is decreasing. It's, it's going to decrease at this point. The reason is because the source inductance is discharging through the load that is resistor R. So consequently, T1 and T2 is having a decreasing current. Isn't it? And what happens to T3 and T4? Again, T3 and T4 will start increasing at this point because this is the point where T3 and T4 is starting to conduct, isn't it? So it starts increasing and goes to its peak value in this particular case. And it remains constant. Again, it will start dropping because in the next cycle, what happens? Be because of the source inductance, the same principle applies and T3 and T4 will not turn off. And consequently, 
the current through T3 and T4 will be decreasing as it is discharging through the load R and consequently in the next cycle T1 and T2 current starts increasing and the cycle repeats. So T1, T2, T3, T4 conducting is called as overlap angle denoted by mu. Again we can extrapolate this waveforms over the starting point of the waveform. So this is how you will have to analyze the operation of this particular circuit. So what is the major observation? What do we observe in terms of the output that we are getting with respect to having a source inductance and then of not having any source inductance? So the major observation is we are seeing that the output voltage is going to zero due to the overlapping of all four thyristors, meaning to say that the output voltage, average output voltage is reducing to some extent. So by the presence of the source inductance, what happens is the average output voltage reduces by a factor. So what is that factor and how to analyze this circuit in terms of average output voltage and derive it with respect to overlap angle mu is what we are going to take a look in the next video. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of the operation and the effect of a source inductance on single phase full converter. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.